is up guys? Welcome back to S2S TV. We're back here in the clean room at S2S Speed Shop. As you guys have been following along on previous episodes, we've been plugging along hard on this quality roofing F100 build. Now that the chassis is all done, we're gonna go ahead and move into this engine compartment. In today's episode, we're gonna show you guys how to install this Whipple Supercharger. I'm here with Andrew, our lead tech at S2S. So what we have here is our 2.9 liter Whipple Supercharger. We're using a belt driven power adder as opposed to turbochargers for simplicity. This is gonna be good in our application for about 11 to 12 PSI boosts. On our 5.0 setup, we're looking to make upwards of 600 horsepower, which is a lot for a truck like this. All right, so one area in preparation for the supercharger that you have to handle are the knock sensors down in the lifter valley here. You have to point the knock sensors away from the supercharger. Down here, we had to make a small modification to the knock sensor wiring harness. Uh, from the factory, it's pretty tight and, and taut through this area. The intercooler actually sits real deep inside the lifter valley down here. So we kind of made the wires with a little bit more slack and they come out here with a little pigtail and made into the stock harness. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the air to water intercooler on top of the engine. We're gonna make sure to install this first before the fuel rails so we don't get in the way of any of the bolts and we're not able to fit any tools to tighten them down. Next to the screw housing, this is the second most important piece of the puzzle. What this does is cools the hot air charge coming into the engine to lower the intake air temperatures. Low intake air temperatures help to create more power. So right now I'm tightening the air to water intercooler assembly down. You wanna tighten it down with the proper torque sequence. Left to right, from the center to the outside. We're prepping our fuel rails. We're gonna use slightly larger fuel injectors. These are out of a GT500, keeping it in the Ford family. Those uh, from the factory are boosted application, so they're gonna work great for what we're doing. When installing any kind of injector or any type of rubber seal or O-ring into anything on your car, always use lubrication. I like to use a silicone spray in, a, in an aerosol can. Without using any kind of lubrication, you can run into having a seal get caught up on a sharp edge, ripping, tearing, or even rolling off of the injector. Now that the rails have the injectors in them, they're gonna be mounted into the air to water intercooler that is gonna replace the lower intake plenum on this car. So they're gonna get bolted directly into this lower portion of the supercharger. Now we're about to prep the lower unit for the blower lid. So we have our O-ring. And again, I'm gonna be using a lube on all the O-rings. So when we go to put the blower lid on, they don't grab and tear and cause a leak. Just like on the intercooler, we're gonna wanna torque all the bolts down to spec. And regardless of if you're using a, you know, a manual click type torque wrench or a digital torque wrench, they're all the same. Just make sure that all the bolts are torqued. You don't wanna over tighten or under tighten any of these fasteners. One key thing to never forget is putting the lubrication into the supercharger unit. Whipple Superchargers provides the exact amount that you need, so there's no mistake on how much needs to be in there. I like doing it now, as soon as the supercharger is bolted on. You know, maybe you're getting real close to first startup. You could forget. Things could get exciting. You want to hear the engine run, but starting it without oil will kill all of that fun. 
We have the supercharger installed in the truck as topped off with oil. We're gonna move our attention to the pulley system. So here on the table we have the aluminum tensure bracket provided by Whipple as well as a handful of pulleys. There's a couple of smooth pulleys and a grooved pulley and these are all gonna route the belt for the supercharger. These here are the spacers that are gonna stand the plate off the engine. There's a couple different sizes here because the engine mounting plate points are on a couple different planes and they're easily numbered on the back side of the dowel and also on the back side of the plate. The only uh, real assembly that you need to do prior to installing the plate is just put this one sliding pulley on here and then the rest of the pulley assembly is gonna happen on the vehicle. You have to put these mount bolts in first before we can attach these pulleys. So in order to get the Whipple Supercharger Supply pulley bracket onto this engine, some of the stock hardware and some of the old pulleys have to come off. Water pump pulley has to come off. One of the idler pulleys has to be removed as well as five bolts. Two of them in the front timing cover and three of them in the water pump housing. And with all these things removed, we can go ahead and install our Supercharger pulley bracket. gate belt that comes with the supercharger kit. You still utilize the stock tensioner, the auto tensioner, as well as this manual tensioner that's here on the Whipple Supercharger bracket. It's a little bit of a sequence and sometimes could use two people. We have here a large breaker bar. Taking the tension off the auto tensioner, as well as setting the tension on here and tightening it down. It could look a little bit complicated because there's so many pulleys. The best thing to do is follow the manufacturer's instructions. Whipple Superchargers provides you with a great diagram. You really can't mess it up. It starts here down at the crankshaft dampener, is routed through the normal accessories, and then up into the additional pulley, idler pulleys and tensioner for the Whipple Supercharger kit. Any type of slippage on the belt is gonna directly correlate to power loss. So keeping tension on this belt is extremely important. Supercharger pulley here is gonna dictate how much boost pressure you make. The smaller you go, the larger boost number you're gonna have for your application. We have here a three and three quarter inch pulley that is gonna be rated for about 11 to 12 PSI boost. With this pulley setup and this particular supercharger on this 5.0 engine, looking to get around 600 plus horsepower. Here we have one of the last pieces to our Whipple Supercharger puzzle. We have the stock throttle body. Uh, with the Whipple Supercharger kit, they provide an adapter to mate your stock throttle body onto the Whipple Supercharger. It's pretty small. They also offer a larger billet throttle body. Larger diameter means that it's gonna be able to ingest more air at any given time. And it looks way nicer too with all this billet. You're gonna utilize some of this factory five liter Coyote parts to make this Whipple Supercharger kit work. So what we're gonna do is remove the case with the contacts and the connector, the drive gear, and the motor, and place it into our new throttle body to make it work. So now with the motor assembly put back into our new throttle body, we can go ahead and get this mounted onto the supercharger. The throttle body is already mounted onto the supercharger and we're gonna move on to the cooling portion of it. And you can see we have the core support mounted up with the radiator on the truck, which was helping us figure out the location of our pump. Initially, we wanted to mount it in the front, but after we put the grill on, there wasn't any room. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to mounting it on the frame rail. So to mount our electric water pump, I had Tim fab up a little bracket, uh, cut it and welded it. And I'm gonna use this to locate the pump on the side of the frame rail. 
and really the pump can mount up, down, left, right. You just have to make sure that the water is coming into the front here and out over here. There's even an arrow to make sure that you really don't mess that up. The water pump comes with a bracket mounted to it already, but we had went and made this one to give us a little bit more freedom to mount it where we needed for our application. So to make the installation a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this pump on our bracket that we made before I get under the truck. Now we're gonna move on to routing the hoses. You can see that it was real important for us to have the radiator mounted up in the core support so we can get the proper length and routing of the hose. One thing to remember when routing hoses or plumbing any kind of cooling system is to always have long sweeping bends. You never wanna have the bends come to uh, an abrupt stop or, or a tight turn like this where the hose could possibly kink and cause a restriction in flow. And you can see that we have it at a very smooth sweeping turn straight down. And we're actually gonna follow the profile of our intake to kind of hide it from sight from the top. Now I'm gonna move on to the outlet from the pump to the heat exchanger. Normally it'd be sitting right on the other side of the radiator just in front, right behind the grill. But for our application, we're doing something a little bit different. All right, so we ran out of space with all the fans, AC condenser, you saw the cooling pump for the heat exchanger, all those things are in the, in the engine bay taking up space. So we decided for our application, it was in the, our best interest to mount our heat exchanger system in the bed of our truck. Tim went ahead and fabbed up some brackets right here that are gonna mount to the factory mounting location on the heat exchanger. The hot water's gonna come in on one side and then exit cooler on this side. The next episode, we're gonna be doing some exterior wiring as well as getting this mounted and plumbing it all up. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe.